Hey guys, welcome to Jackman Works, Rhode Island. Come on in, I'll show you around the shop. As you can see, I've kind of gone for a little bit of a minimalist theme here. It's pretty popular and I figured I'd give it a shot. There's lots of room for activities and lots of room to build stuff. And obviously I didn't have quite enough room, so I built that little loft up there for some extra storage space. Yes, yeah, so that's it. Not really a whole lot to see actually, but. So let's see outside, so let me show you around. This is my work truck here. It's uh, as much of a tool as anything in my shop is, really. So the majority of the lumber loads I get actually go up on the roof. I have these extra long bars that are actually made for utility vans, but that actually enables me when I get to my destination to unload the lumber a lot easier because I can slide it out on the end of the bars and then lift it onto my shoulders and bring it into the shop. And special bonus is actually able to fit two kayaks in the center and a bike on either side all at the same time. Then right behind that, I have my five by eight utility trailer. There's actually a video putting the sides onto this, but anything that's too big to fit in the element, which isn't much, will go in here. I'll deliver big loads of Adirondack chairs or things like that in the back of the trailer. And I tow it right behind the element. Probably hear it already. It wreaks havoc on every little bit of auto recording that I do in the shop. But right here next to the shop, my private little river that runs behind it. And right out there is the shop waterfall. Let's walk back so we can see a little bit closer. That's my yacht. I'm always picking up random logs. They're always sitting out here in the front waiting to be turned down into bowls or uh, something similar. And obviously we have my model Adirondack chair right here. So the building where my shop is was actually the old boathouse for the mill building. There's a couple other little off buildings. We have a glass blower here and an arborist over here. So back here is the main mill building. It used to be a textile mill for a long time. I'll definitely show you the inside of the main mill building, but I think there's a couple more things I can show you inside of my shop. So welcome to the real Jackman Works, Rhode Island. This is a 22 by 22 foot workspace with a 10 foot ceiling, except for the little closet over there, which is about seven feet by six feet, has some loft storage on top and storage on the wall. I'll show you a little bit more about that later. When I first moved in here, I took all the measurements of the shop, transferred those onto SketchUp and imported all of my tools so I could do a shop layout. That way I could move things around digitally so I could figure out the layout before I actually put stuff in place in the shop physically. So the main feature of the shop is actually this center island here, which consists of my table saw and my two workbenches that are made from pallets. There's a video on my channel of the construction of these. Everything else is laid out around the perimeter of this center island. And I guess we'll just start at one side and walk around and see everything that's in here. So over here in this first corner is the CNC. This is an Inventables x card the bigger version. So the table holding up the CNC was a custom piece that I built. There's actually a video for that too. Inside the drawer are all my router bits and CNC, miscellaneous CNC parts. The control unit for the CNC is housed over here on a shelf. The shelf up here actually holds my laptop while I'm operating the CNC. And then underneath is storage for salt horses and some miscellaneous lumber. The x carve is an entry level CNC, so it has its limitations, but it's worked pretty well in my shop so far. Parked next to the CNC is my main dust collector. It's a one and a half horsepower unit with the filter cartridge on top. I just hooked up to a couple of the stretchy Rockler hoses. One runs on the ground over to my table saw and the other runs over to this vacuum so that's always in place so I can quickly sweep the floors with that and clean all the dust up. So moving over here I have a power strip on the wall so I have plenty of power and plenty of places to plug things in. Have some levels, squares, and my track saw track hanging up on the wall. All my metal scrap storage is actually just sitting in a trash bin over here so I can pull pieces out when I need them. I don't use that too often. Then I have my Rockler T-Track table sitting over here. This thing's awesome. I got the wheels on it so I can move it around for uh, projects like the Adirondack chairs. So with each process in the assembly line, I can move the pieces around with me around the shop. Underneath the T-Track table, I store my pancake air compressor, which just plugs into the power strip. And if I need to wheel this thing around, I just unplug it. 
Then tucked away in this corner against the French cleat wall, I have my vacuum system, which is hooked up to my shop vac. I have the Rockler dust separator along with the hose reel, which is 20 feet, so it'll reach basically anywhere in the shop to clean up the dust. More importantly, it reaches all sides of my workbench for things like sanding. Then over here on my flip top tool table, I have my belt spindle sander on top. And on the underside is my 13 inch thickness planer. Depending on which one I'm using, I can flip it around to access that tool. I figured when I moved into this bigger shop, I would actually get rid of this, but it's worked so well, I've just kept it in place as is. Then back behind me is the infamous French cleat clamp and peanut butter wall. The far side over there holds all of my long pipe clamps. And then the shorter bar clamps are across here with my smaller spring clamps next to those. All the metal brackets that hold these up actually came from a local retail store that was closing when we moved here and I bought a bunch of those, saved them from the dumpster. And then all of my most used hardware is housed in these peanut butter jars proudly displayed on the French cleat wall. I have so many peanut butter jars because I've been saving them since college because they were so useful. So just figured I would save them from the dumpster and use them for this instead. Now in the center of the shop is the center island which has a table saw and these two separate pallet wood workbenches here. This is my main workhorse and where most of the work gets done. The workbenches give me a solid work surface for all operations. And then underneath I have a lot of additional storage for things like my chainsaw, some toolboxes, my vise, and miscellaneous other materials. And then the wing of my table saw is home to my router lift, and underneath that is storage for a few of the table saw slides that I have. You'll see these five gallon buckets kind of scattered around my shop. I use them for lumber storage. It started as more of a temporary solution, but it proved to be a pretty great idea because they're easy to move around. You can tuck them in uh, different corners and they store all different lengths of material. So for an example, this guy here is a bunch of pallet slats that I saved from the dumpster. So if we come on over to this this side of the French cleat wall, you can see all the other storage and everything. So in this corner we have the storage loft and French cleat storage wall that I built. That's for clamp storage and hardware storage on that side. And inside, a lot of people ask me, it's actually a shared space. It's for a fridge and a microwave that I share with my neighbor Bob. And then out hey, here Bob, I have- Can I borrow a tape measure from you please? I used this here for my drill press storage, which was actually a temporary solution originally. So up top on the loft, I store my lesser used items. I have things like some veneer, some Fort Mica, some specialty things like acrylic tubes, chicken wire, my sanding carpet, some logs, and just stuff that I don't want cluttering the floor space. So I stick it up there until I really need it and then I'll climb up there and get it. Then my prized Jimmy Diresta ice pick, which I haven't had to use. Yeah. So sticking out on this side of the shop, I have my 16 by 42 inch lathe. It's a one and a half horsepower motor, it actually runs on regular 120 outlet. There's enough room to store my trash can underneath there and a couple of logs that are gonna end up being bowl blanks eventually. I have the headstock towards the wall and have it sticking out onto the floor so I can access all three sides of it for uh, shooting camera angles and also accessing the back sides of bowls or whatever for sanding. It also lends itself for easier cleanup without all the sawdust stuck against the wall. So this is a Craigslist find. It was an upgrade from my old Harbor Freight lathe, uh, which was decent for the price, but really couldn't handle the stuff that I was trying to throw at it. It's actually the same lathe that my friend has. Caltooth. So up here above my head, you can see a big shelf of storage for some smaller hand tools, like my jigsaw, a router, my brad guns, and things like that. Keeps them out of the way unless I'm actually using them. In that case, I pull them down, I use them, and then I put them back in place. In a shop this size, you kind of have to find storage wherever you can. So things like these Rockler corner jigs, I just stuck away on top of these angle brackets. Tucked back here behind my lathe is my metal cutting bandsaw. I don't use it too often, so I stuck it away here out of the floor space so I'm not tripping over it, and I just pull it out whenever I need to use it. The next on this wall here is one of the main features in my shop. It's the Jackman miter saw station, which takes up most of this wall. This functions as a home for my miter saw station, but that's almost a minor detail. It functions as a huge part of the storage in my shop for small hand tools, my grinder, uh, miscellaneous hardware, and things like that that fit in these nice drawers. So I built this in modules, each one of these being a three foot section together combined makes a 12 foot long table. So I get a little bit over three feet of cut capacity on the right hand side of the saw and a little bit over seven feet of cut capacity on the left hand side of the saw. And even on top of the miter saw station, a little bit additional storage. I have my scrap wood storage up here. Those are all my really short pieces that I want to keep. There's a home for my glue bottles. My drill and impact gun live up here. And then I have boxes up on top for my scrap wood cutoff pieces. A lot of those come from the miter saw. So I house those right up there. So now it's the perfect time to play the game. What's in Paul's drawers? <laughs> 
Hardware, grandfather's peanut butter jar. PVC plastic scrap pieces, save from the dumpster. My grinder and sharpening station. Hardware, metal working bits, glue up bits. Still needs to be organized. All my fastening tools, all my cutting tools, all of my grabbing tools, and all my measuring tools. Bonus drawer. Notebooks, carbon paper, pieces of paper. Uh, big mess. Random bits of foam. Nothing. Lathe tools. Stuff. A whole bunch of scraps saved from the dumpster. Plexiglass. Mirrors. Power cord. Sanding drawer. The jig drawer. The biscuit joiner and miscellaneous drawer. The hardwood scrap drawer. Grinding discs. Wood. More miscellaneous drawer. Tool parts and manuals drawer. Table saw brakes and saw blade drawer. Secret drawer. And then back here next to the miter saw station, I have my 14 inch bandsaw. I found this to be a great home here next to the miter saw station because a lot of the cuts come over this table here and it's good to keep it tucked away in this corner. Anything bigger than this upper cabinet gets in the way for, the bandsaw is on wheels and I can pull it away from the wall to cut those bigger pieces and then tuck it back in place. My Rockler bench cookies live up here on the side of the miter saw station. Those are a great way to keep these out of the way up here. It's funny how much I realize now how many things are kind of tucked away in the corners as I walk around. Have my adjustable ladder here tucked away behind the bandsaw as well. This is an expanding extension ladder. Works as a step ladder and also a, I think, 22 foot extension ladder. My lathe tools live under this window here because my lathe used to live in this corner and I just have not transferred them over to the new location yet. So over here in this corner is some more of these five gallon buckets that I use for storage. Mostly it's lumber storage. I have some more of this apple bin cherry that I saved from the dumpster. Some more pallet wood saved from the dumpster. And then inside this stack of three buckets is my collection of glass blowing scrap glass that I saved out of the dumpster. And then up here on the wall is the super secret white box. Moving on. And then over here on the last wall, I have my extension cord. I pull this out whenever I need power at the workbench and then reel it back up to get it out of the way when I'm done. You'll notice how many windows there are in here. There's actually a total of eight around the outside of the shop. And these window sills have proved to be really handy for storing things like my cordless battery charger, my branding iron, and whatever this is. And the last thing here is my metal finishing cabinet. This came from the same place that I got all those metal brackets from. When they were closing up shop, I saved this guy from going in the dumpster. Inside, I store all of my finishes, my thinners, my rags, and my gloves, and everything that kind of goes along with that whole process, including my five gallon glue bottle. And then obviously we have my glorious sticker collection on the outside. Little known fact, these actually aren't stickers. I've made them all into magnets. So if I get angry at guys like Jimmy, on the back of my door houses all of my PPE. Hanging up here, I have my face shield, dust collection, ear protection, and my safety glasses, which I use all the time. Then hidden in behind my metal cabinet, I have a little bit of sheet goods storage. All my big pieces of plywood, foam, plexiglass, things like that. All those things live back here, sandwiched between the metal cabinet and the door. Now these two doors here are actually pretty great because they're not garage doors. It's actually a double door. Typically, I just use this single door here on the right-hand side. But if I need to cut anything like full sheets of plywood, this paint cabinet is on wheels and it rolls out of the way, and I can open both of these double doors. In this current configuration, I can cut anything up to about four feet in length on the table saw. If I roll the paint cabinet out of the way with the door closed, I can do about six feet. And then anything bigger, I just open up the doors. And the last thing we're talking about is probably on the floor and the ceiling. All of the walking surface in the shop I have covered with these anti-fatigue foam floor mats. These attach together like puzzle pieces and they form all the way around the center island, in front of the CNC and behind the lathe where I'm standing most frequently. There's actually a couple locations in the shop where I have these super heavy duty rubber mats that I found in the dumpster. I have these placed in the spots where I'm standing for the most amount of time, which includes in front of the lathe and in front of the table saw. And then last up on the ceiling, I have two racks of lumber storage running along either side of the shop. And I have a single air filtration unit I'll run that whenever I'm doing any particularly dusty operations like sanding. It also has a built-in timer so I can set it to run for one or two hours after I leave the shop. It's kind of clear the air so all the sawdust doesn't settle on everything. So I actually went out on social media to ask people if they had any questions about my shop layout, my tools, or anything like that. So I figured I'll go through these specific questions and then I'll show you a few of the other artists in the mill. So what are the parts that drove me the most crazy and what would I change? 
There's not a whole lot, honestly, that I would change. I've been pretty happy with the shop I've been able to put together here. I think one thing I might change in my next shop are the foam floor pads. Those are pretty lightweight and they tend to rip really easily and they get sucked up with the vacuum. So I think in the next shop, I'm gonna get some more heavy duty floor pads that will stay in place. I still haven't been able to install a full dust collection system, although I'm not sure it was entirely necessary in a shop this small. I had a dedicated hose running from the dust collector to the table saw, which is really the most important one in my opinion. It would be nice though to have a hose running to the band saw and also the miter saw. I actually planned ahead and built the miter saw station so there was a place to run a hose. Where is the waterfall relative to the shop? That's not a joke, it really is right outside. Your lighting setup for work and shooting videos. Well, I have those four fluorescent fixtures on the ceiling with two bulbs in each of them. They're all on a single light switch, but each of them has their own individual pull chain on it. So if I need to adapt the lighting situation in the shop, depending on what I'm working on or where I'm working, I'll turn each one of those on and off until I get the lighting situation I want. Really nothing fancier than that. Because of all these windows, there's always a battle with the sun coming across the south side of this shop here across the course of the day. But I've just kind of embraced it and use it for some cool lighting situations. What's in the break room? A fridge, a microwave, some food, and a couple chairs, and me if I'm hungry. Be nice to have an opinion of Harbor Freight tools. Not everybody can afford Festool. Neither can I. Obviously with anything you typically get what you pay for, but there are a few gems at Harbor Freight. One of them that comes to mind is the biscuit joiner. How do you avoid spending a quarter of your day walking around looking for the tape that you just had? My miter saw station. Same thing for all my pencils too. Let's see the yacht. All right, I think that's it for the specific questions. If you have any more, drop a comment below. Now let me go around and show you other artists in the mill. We'll see who's still working. Weavers, painters, charcoal, metal artists, painter, glass blowers, dumpster, floral designer, clock repair, surveyor, sculpturer, arborist, journalist. Get the f out of here! So there you go, that is Jackman Works Rhode Island for you. Hope you enjoyed the tour and hopefully you learned a few things about how I lay things out, store things, and uh, just stuff that you can use in your own wood shop. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. I post new videos every Monday. And be sure to drop down there and leave me a comment if you have any questions about this shop. New shop coming very soon. Thanks guys.